little bit smaller than the last one, but still a nice fish, all in all. There we go. <laughs> That's our size. There you go. It's good. Oh, good. So, yes, what are you using today for your setup? Well, I've got an eight-foot two-weight rod. It's a two-piece rod. Yeah. One that Scott makes. It's got a slow action to it, and I've had a lot of trouble today because I've been trying to go too fast with it. Yeah. Because my other nine and a half foot rod that I've been using, it's a five weight, it's a little faster action. All right. So I've had to just slow it down, just take a little while to get used to it is all. I think that's a good piece of information for the people because a lot of guys say, oh, I can get my eight weight rod out and then I'll go to my two weight and, you know, and they won't be able to cast certain rods the same. Yeah. And, and it is, the lighter the rod, I think the softer the action, the slower you have to become. Yep. Just takes a little bit of getting used to, so just practice, practice. You know, as but we say. there's nothing better because you can cast a two-way rod like this all day long. You're not going to get tired. No, I don't know what this weighs. It's a couple ounces, two ounces. Two ounces, and yeah. the reel again, yeah. nothing for weight. Just an awesome way to fish. But you know what I am using is a little bit longer of a leader. I found I had about a seven or eight foot leader. I couldn't get very long drift. You can see how many currents there are here you're trying to fight with to try and get a yeah. dead drift because the cutties still like the dead drift. Oh, they do. So I just lengthened sure. it up. I'm running about 11 feet right now. 11 feet, that's what I have. I think I got, uh, I have a nine foot leader and I put about three feet on it. So I'm running about yeah. 12. <laughs> Look at that. And I just go and oh, and it's not a bad one. It just shows you with cutthroat, you could even have the fly skidding down there and you're going to catch fish. Oh, and this is a, this that's is our a average one. size. <laughs> Look at that. That's funny. Eh? Isn't that amazing? You know what I said about presentation? Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just kind of went against all our rules, but yeah. that's a nice little fish. Well, you know oh, what? Yeah, they're healthy. On this fly, I'll just let them go. This fly's been really good today. Yeah. This spider fly. It's an Italian fly, spider fly that was used in the World Championships that my brother went to. And it was down in Jackson Hole. And uh, this fly was one of the one of the ten top ten, and right uh, I think we should tie it. Show the good people. idea. That's a pretty funky looking fly. It is. It's it's, it's it's quite a large fly. I think it imitates a big sedge. Yep. And uh, it just really deadly for cutthroat. They really like it. It's got a little bit of sparkle in the wing, and that's yeah. That's a good idea. I think I we should know. go to the bench, and everybody can learn how to tie up a new type of fly for sure. Exactly. Right on. Ah. Hi, and welcome to the bench. Well, today we're going to tie you up a real nice little pattern. It's called the Italian spider fly. You know, the Italians did really well with this fly at the World Championships down in Jackson Hole, and they were kind enough to show everybody the fly later on. So we thought we'd tie it on the bench for you because it is such a hot little fly. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. To tie the spider fly up, we're going to use a size 10 TMC 205BL 5X wide hook. We're going to use some Adolph black thread. For the butt, we'll use some bright orange thread. We'll use a light dun hackle to hackle the body. For the body, we'll use some pheasant tail. And for the wing, we'll use a few strands of crystal flash along with some light elk hair. To start the fly off, I've wrapped all my black thread right onto the hook. I like a nice base of black thread on my hook. I've got some of the bright orange thread and I'm going to wrap it back to form a nice little red butt section right at the back of the fly. In this butt section, you probably want it to be about an eighth of an inch long and keep it fairly thick. Now that I have my red butt tied in and my thread back on, my black thread, I'm going to take one of my, my dun hackles and I'm going to tie it in by the tip right at the very base, just above that nice orange butt that we tied in. I've taken about eight strands of my pheasant tail and I'm going to tie these in by the tip just above where we put in the butt section. Tie them down real nice and just wrap forward to form a body. Now you'll notice that the pheasant tail only makes it about halfway up on the fly, which is fine. We're going to do the same thing for the upper part of the fly after we finish the bottom half of the fly. Now that I've wrapped the pheasant tail up about halfway up my hook, I'm going to take the hackle that we've had back there and we're slowly going to palmer it up and keep this hackle nice and full. Don't have too much spacing between the hackles. Try to utilize the whole hackle for the stretch halfway up to the hook. Now we're just going to repeat the last two steps. We're going to take another hackle and tie it in right at the halfway point where the last section ended. For the top half of the body now, I've taken about 10 strands of my pheasant tail. 
And again, I'm just going to tie them in by the tips. Make sure they're tied down nice and even. And we'll wrap this pheasant tail up to form the nice body on the top end of the fly. And wrap it right towards the eyelet, right up to the eyelet. The front end of the body is now tied in. I'm going to take my, my done hackle that I've had sitting there in the middle of the fly. And I'm slowly going to palmer that up towards the eyelet. Again, keep the hackle nice and full. For the wing now, I'm going to use some crystal flash to put on the under wing. This crystal flash, we want it about almost the length of the hook. Make sure that crystal flash comes right almost to the butt end of the hook, and we'll tie it in. For the last stage in the fly, I've taken some stacked light elk hair, and we're just going to put this over the wing and try to match it up to the length of the sparkle flash underwing we've just put in and then tie it in. Take a couple of loose turns and then tie it a little tighter. All this extra material at the front, gather up once you've tied it in and just snip it off to form a nice little head right at the front of the hook. Well, there it is, the Italian spider fly. Fairly simple pattern to tie and uh, it's fairly new. A lot of people have seen it in magazines and I was fortunate enough that my brother brought me one back from the World Championships in Jackson Hole. One thing we did find out about this fly is it's absolutely a marvelous cutthroat pattern.